Uh, we would like to introduce into evidence Defense Exhibits 3 and 2. These have been previously marked for identification and uh, authenticated um, through witnesses that were called by the state. And we would like to move them into evidence and, uh, and at the appropriate time publish them to the jury. And we have made copies for that purpose. Any yes, sir. All right. They're allowed. And when do you wish to do that? Um, I think uh, at, at following our presentation of, of other witnesses, we will, right. uh, we've made copies and we'll publish those to the jury. That's May fine. I approach the clerk to? Yes, please. Two? Testimony you give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Thank you. <coughs> um, good morning, Mr. Watkins. Could you please tell the jury your name? James L. Watkins. And do you know um, Nate Holden? Yes, I do. How do you know him? I know him through him by my bro uh, my wife, brother. Okay. Um, and so you're related to him? Yes. For, for your wife? Uh, Nephew. Uh, and have you known him his whole life? Yes, I do. Um, you obviously know about the charges that happened in April 9th, 2014. Before that, had you ever seen or heard of um, um, Nate doing anything violent? Objection. No. No, never have. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> He can offer an opinion as to character, okay. but uh, as far as specific instances of conduct, uh, that's not permitted. Do you, have, um, do you have an opinion about whether Nate, before this happened, was a violent person? No, I have not. Well, do you have an opinion? Do I have an opinion? About whether Nate is violent? No. All right. I guess my question is, um, do you have... Um, it's not, I'm not asking right now whether or not he's, did you, in your opinion, is Nate violent? No, he's not. Okay. Um, do you know, um, did you know Sylvester Taylor? Yes, I did. How did you know him? I knew him through him by gardening with him for a couple of years. Doing, so you did work with him? Yes, gardening. Okay. With him at all. And um, did you ever um, hear him say anything about Nate? Yes, he told me that. Um, Your Honor, if we could be heard. I'm sustaining it right now just simply because I can't determine whether it's relevant to anything in this case. I mean, to say, have you heard, any, did he say anything about his father-in-law is, is a very broad question. Okay. Did he ever make a threat towards, did, the question is whether Mr. Taylor, did Mr. Taylor ever make a threat about Little Nate? Objection. And to sustain. Okay. Hearsay. I would either like to be heard or argue that. I'm sorry, who is the, I've, I've lost track of who, uh, who exactly is the declarant in this case? Sylvester yeah. Taylor. All right, and you're asking whether he ever heard Mr. Taylor make a threat? Yes. What's the basis of your objection? Uh, it's hearsay. I don't think there's any, I mean, for the truth of the matter, asserted. I don't, I don't know much about this gentleman, to be quite frank, but there's no context here in terms of relevancy or hearsay. All right. 
All right. I think you'd need to lay some foundation as to why it's relevant to this particular matter. Okay. And, I, and as I do so, I'm, I'm also I do it goes to the state of mind. With it. Um, let's talk about, before we get into any details about the thing, could you tell us where the statement was made? I'm not asking you to say what the statement is, just where, where you two were when the statement was made. Who was on the road? Okay. Um, and you're on the road, were you working together, the two of you? Yes. Uh huh. Um, and and about how long ago was this? I will say back 14, I would say. Well, 14 is when, when the crimes happened. It could have been... Well, it could have been uh, 12 or uh, 13. Okay. And, again, I'm not asking, but the two of you were talking. Is that what happened? Pardon me? The two of you were talking. Yes, uh-huh. Um, and then he said something about Big Nate? About yes. Little Nate? Yes. You say about Jack. little Nate. Objection. Overrule. Go ahead. He told me that he was going to kill him. Objection, motion, and strike. If I may be heard. Yes. Uh, members of the jury, uh, if you'd step outside and uh, into the deliberation room, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Leave your notebooks in your chairs, please. Waller, what's the basis of your objection? Your Honor, uh, hearsay relevance in, in regards to a state of mind argument, I mean, we're, Mr. Watkins is talking about something that he can't even really tell you what date it happened on. He said in 2012 or 2013, somewhere on the road, we don't know what the context of where we are on the road is. And in regard, um, and now we've heard it's a statement about, I guess, Sylvester is going to kill little, little Nate. Uh, that statement being made back in 2012, I don't see how it goes to um, the defendant's state of mind on April 9th of 20, uh, on 2014, uh, knowing nothing else uh, about how this statement was made. It's a, hear, it's a hearsay statement, and I don't find it relevant to this, to this um, April 9th of 2014 at all. All right, I'm going to overrule the objection, allow it in. Um, are there other statements that you'll be listing along these lines? Because we have this witness. Yes, this witness or others. Uh, we will need to talk about them before you bring them in. Um, there's no no other statements from this witness. Um, there will be at least one other statement. All right, we'll do a voir dire before. Okay. Uh, just to understand the the context of them, the relevancy. Yes, but and I will say it for. I don't believe in looking through all the discovery. We don't have a, pre, a prior statement from Mr. Watkins, so that's kind of where I am too in terms of not really sure what he's he, he's going to say. All right. There, there's no there's no other statements. All right. I'm going to overrule the objection. We could bring jurors back in. Did you? I thought you wanted. Was there a statement you wanted? To, We're going to do it with that other witness. I that's, we've not, I have another oh, witness that has a um, statement with okay. him. He asked me if to. Forecast that beforehand, sure, okay. and I'll be willing Sorry, to do that. Sorry, I thought we were talking about this one still. Okay.
Um, no more questions. Cross-examination, Mr. Waller. Mr. Watkins, uh, who are you to the defendant? How are you related to him? Nate. Yes. Uh, my nephew by marriage. Okay. And where do you live, Mr. Watkins? I live uh, the Ponderosa, Wendell. In, out in Wendell? Mm hmm Okay. And you, um, you just testified that you didn't know Nate to have a violent character, but you weren't present um, at Lake Glad Road on the night of April 9th of 2014, were you? No. You didn't see him shoot and kill uh, Sylvester Taylor, did you? No. You didn't shoot and see him shoot and kill Anglia Taylor, did you? No. And you didn't see him beat his, wa his wife, um, Latanya Allen, with a gun and shoot her two times, did you? No. All right. Thank you, sir. I don't have any further questions. All right. Anything on redirect? No, sir. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Further evidence for the defense? Will you please state your full name for the record? Nathaniel Jamal Carroll. And what is your relationship to Nathan Holden? I'm his brother. Are you his full brother? We have the same dad. Mm -hmm. And so you're the same father and different and mother. Different, mothers. different mother, yes. Uh, so you're his half brother? <coughs> yes. <clears throat> Tell me about, um, well, did you, did you grow up with Nate? Yes. Tell me about that <coughs> arrangement. Um, well, I, Nate stayed with um, my dad and his mom, and I lived with my mom. I basically saw him every weekend and, you know, holidays, summer breaks, things like that when school was in a session. And there was a period of time where um, I lived close enough to see them on a daily basis, you know, when my sister and I were going to the same school. So that's when you were children, you saw him on a regular basis. And how much, uh, what's the age difference between you and Nate? Six years. Who's older? He is. So have you continued to have a close relationship as you've become adults? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, Nate was, you know, like my best friend. He was a confidant. He was like a life coach for me. Um... As we got older, you know, he taught me a lot of things about life. Like, you know, he was, I knew that he was my brother, but he kind of treated me like he was my dad. So he, you know, always tried to keep me on the right track and teach me the positive things in life. Did you and Nate ever talk about, did Nate ever share with you his views about family? Objection. Sustained. Well, it's, it's a yes or no question. He can answer that, but just the specific views. Yes. Can you tell me about those views? Objection. Sustained. Hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, this, this goes to Mr. Holden's state of mind. Hearsay. Did you uh, have an opportunity to observe Nate and uh, Nate's relationship with his wife Latanya. Yes. Tell me. Um, so I mean, that how old were you when Nate and Latanya got together? Like eight or nine. And tell me about what you observed in the early part of their relationship. Um, well, to all of us, it was like they were the perfect couple. Like they were the idol for all of us. We objections are relevant. 
Your Honor, obviously the sale of the relationship between All right. the two. I'll, if, I need, if I need a response, I'll ask you. Um, I'm going to allow limited description of, of times well before the events that are on trial in this case. Very limited. Go ahead, Mr. Carroll. What was the question again? So we were talking about um, what you observed about Nate and LaTanya's relationship in the early part of their relationship. I would say they had the perfect image of a great relationship. And did they seem happy together? They seemed very happy. What they were like the life of the party. Every time you saw them, they were laughing and joking. They were just known to be goofy. Objection, Your Honor. This is mitigation. All right, sustain. Did you have an opportunity to observe Nate as a father? I did. And what did you observe? He was a great father. He would do anything for his kids. Did you have a close relationship with Nate's kids? I did. I treated them as if they were my kids. Have you ever known Nate to be violent with his children? Objection. Sustain. Um, so you, you're aware, you were aware, uh, when Nate and Tanya's relationship, uh, when, when the, when LaTanya left in December of 2013? Mm -hmm. How'd you find out about that? Nate texts me. And, uh, tell me, uh, did you spend time with Nate? during the time when the two of them were separated in 2014? Yes. Did you, how much time did you spend together? Um, pretty, well, we ended up living together, so I pretty much seen him every single day. I basically was there, like, throughout the whole process. What did you observe about his emotional state? Um, it was my first time ever seeing him cry. He, um, you could tell he was up and down. He had his good days, his bad days, but he had a determination to get his family back. Would you say it's the most upset you've ever seen him? Objection. Uh, sustained. As to form. How upset was he? I was very emotionally distressed. Does Nate, as you know him, does he express his feelings readily? Not often. He's Overruled. Not often. He's always smiling from ear to ear. I mean, you know, always laughing about something. I'm, I'm going to instruct you to limit yourself to the, to the question that was asked. Was the emotional state you saw him in during the period of the separation different than the way he usually is? Very. I believe there was a time when, during, this, during this time period when Nate um, set about remodeling a, a home. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? He remodeled um, his grandparents' home down on... Irrelevance. What, what time period are we talking about? This is right around, right before, Just in the months could, prior to... If you could ask mm -hmm. the witness what time period we're talking about so I can understand the relevancy. So tell me when this home was remodeled. We started remodeling the home in January of 2014. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take? Um, about a month, okay, maybe so a little bit longer. So this was, this was right after the separation began? Yeah, yes. And this is because he, he had to move residences? Yes. Why did he have to move? Um, basically, a lot of the things that um, was, I guess, taken from him in the separation Put him in a bond. Objection. Sustain. Move to strike. Juries to disregard. 
So tell me about the remodeling of the home. He spent day and night pretty much um, trying to get the house in a livable situation once um, he did the demolition on it um, because he was determined to make sure he had somewhere for his kids to stay. And you say day and night. Uh, was he working all night? Literally. Was he sleeping? Barely. And was this unusual behavior? Yes, I would say. Did he tell you why he was remodeling this home? Uh, it's a yes or no question, but you can answer yes or no. Yes. What did he say? Objection. Sustained. Uh, so you um, you spent a fair amount of time, it sounds like, with Nate during the separation. You said you were living together. Yes. Were you? Um, did you also spend time with Nate and his children during this time? I did. Were you present on January 26th when there was a custody exchange at a McDonald's parking lot? Yes. Can you tell me about what happened that evening? When we arrived at the McDonald's to exchange the children with uh, Sylvester, he got out of the car and he tried to shake. Let me just stop you and say, when you say he, we need to make sure we know who he is. Sylvester. Okay. Got out of the car and tried to shake Nate's hand. And Nate refused to shake his hand and they exchanged words and... He took the kids and took off speeding through town. Okay. Did you, um, did you notice anything in Sylvester's car? It was a bag right by the seat on the floor. Mm -hmm. Did you have a guess as to what was in that bag? Objection. Sustained. So tell me what happened after Sylvester sped away. Before we could get back to Raleigh Hill, my nephew was calling, um, saying that him and his grandfather had got into it and that he had put a gun out on him. And then what happened? Um, we told him to call the police. And do you remember what Nate's reaction was to this news? Upset. How did you know he was upset? I mean, I could just tell in his voice and, you know, his thought process, how his words changed. Did, have you spent much time with Sylvester Taylor in your life? As a child. Okay. He was the deacon of the church. So you attended uh, the, the church where Pastor Taylor was the pastor? Mm hmm I grew up there. Um... Did you ever hear Sylvester make threats against Nate? Objection. Sustained. Conversations with Nate about threats that Sylvester Taylor had made to him. Yes. Tell me about that. Objection. It's sustained. <laughs> Going back to January 26th, you said that, um, that Nate was really upset. You could tell from the tone of his voice, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, was there any discussion with Nate about about what to do in light of the call he'd received from Jeremy? Yes. And, and what, 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 tell me about that. Objection, I, it, it, here's the discussion between. Right, it's sustained as to form. The discussion is, uh, the, and the, the discussion between yourself and, and Nate. Yes, we did have a discussion. <laughs> what, what was that discussion? Our first conversation was to go to rescue Jeremy, because we felt like he was in a harmful situation. And why did you decide not to do that?
Because I had the Lord on my side. Because hmm? I had the Lord on my side. Yes, what do you mean I kind of talked myself out of it. Mm-hmm. And was able to talk Nate out of it. And why did you think it was a bad idea? Um, at the time, we were going through the custody battle. And um, I was a state employee, so I needed my child. Were you um, were you present at Jeremy's birthday party on April fifth, the twenty fourteen? Yes. Uh, was Latanya present at that party? No. Did you have any conversations with Nate about the fact that she wasn't there? Yes. Tell me about that. Objection. Uh, Sustain. Your Honor, uh, this again goes to state of mind. Sustained. How did Nate feel about... Objection as now he felt. Did you notice any emotional reaction in Nate about the fact that Latanya didn't come? Yes. Tell me about that. I knew that he was upset due to her not bringing the birthday cake. Well, she, he was upset about her not coming overall, but she was supposed to bring the birthday cake to the party. Okay, thank you, Jamal. Those are the questions I have. Cross-examination. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Oh. Ma'am, if I may approach Madam Clark. Yes. You're the defendant's half-brother, is that right? Yes. Okay, and um, you saw the defendant on a regular basis when you were children, and you described him as a life coach, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and he texted you when um, Latanya left with the kids, is that right? Yes. Okay, and, and, and you said that you began living with him after that? Yes. Or he began living with you, I guess? No, I was living with him. Were you living with him at Holden Acres or at the... Both. At both. So, mm-hmm. so you were living with him up until April 9th? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, you spoke about the January 26th incident, the custody exchange with 
Mr. Sylvester Taylor. Is that right? I was asked about it, yes. And, and you were there, weren't you? Yes. Okay. Um, and you say that you just testified that Mr. Taylor tried to shake the defendant's hand. Is that right? He did. It, but the, the defendant refused to shake his hand? He did. And at that point, Mr. Taylor took off with the, with the kids? After they exchanged words. All right. Um, did you hear the words? Some of them. Do you recall the defendant saying to Mr. Taylor, if you got something to say, say it to me? Yes. All right. Um, now, were, were you aware that the defendant then went and applied for uh, emergency custody of all three children? Yes. And did you go with him to do that? I did. All right. And uh, you, you actually signed an affidavit in support of uh, of his petition for emergency custody. Is that right? Yes. Right. Um, and you saw a black bag in the car, or a bag in Mr. Taylor's car, is that correct? Yes. But you never saw a gun? No. Were you here for um, JT's testimony, or have you heard JT's testimony? No. But based on what JT, what, what JT reported to y'all that night, right. you went... And um, helped him get this temporary custody order. Is that right? Yes. Were you at the uh, Were you at the later court hearing where uh, custody was granted for the? Um, the, for the defendant to have JT reside with him and the girls to reside with uh, the mother of Tanya Holden? Yes. And were you aware also uh, of an order uh, requiring Sylvester Taylor to uh, remove guns, whatever firearms might have been at his house at Lake Glad Road? I was. And was the defendant present for that as well? Yes. And was that sometime in February or March? Could have been February 10th. I don't remember verbatim so much stuff happened in that period of time. And you were um, uh, living with the defendant and so closely involved with him? Yes. Um, now, you said that you and the defendant had a discussion about going to rescue JT from the situation. Is that right? Yes. And, and so would that mean going to um, Sylvester Taylor's house on Lake Ladder Road? Yes, if necessary. And you said that you, that you didn't because you had the Lord on your side, correct? That's what I said. All right. And that there was a custody battle. Yes. And that you needed your job. Yes. And was it also part of your thinking that because there was a domestic violence order of protection in, in place against the defendant, that he should not go to the house um, on Lake Glad Road to extract one of his children? Yes, that crossed my mind as well. And, it, and and did you discuss that with the defendant? I did. All right. And you said he was upset because Latanya did not go to Jeremy's birthday party or bring the cake on April the 5th. Is that right? Yes. And he shot her twice and shot Sylvester Taylor four times and Anglia Taylor one time on April 9th. That, that's, how do I suppose on that? Thank you, sir. I don't think further. <coughs> Redirect. All right. Uh, so, members of the jury, I'm going to ask you to step in the deliberation room. Please leave your notepads in the chair. Don't discuss the case among yourselves.
Mr. Carroll, did you ever hear, oh, I'm sorry, my microphone is off. Did you ever hear Sylvester Taylor threaten Nate Holden? Yes. Tell me about that. Well, for me, it was something that um, I heard continuously from the time they got together. Continuously. From the time they got together at a young age, he always um, said that he would kill him and just go to the VA hospital and get away with it. And what uh, ex that last part? Explain what you what you understood that to mean. Go to the VA hospital and get away with it. Basically, he could kill him and get away with it because I guess because he was in the military or whatever, however that works. Uh, and you and you heard Sylvester say this? Yes. Did you ever discuss these threats with Nate? I did. What did Nate say about them? He would just always say, "Do you hear this shit or do you believe this shit?" Um, did, and what did you say to Nate in those circumstances, those conversations? I mean, I'm the type of person, I'm an action person, so being that I had heard it for so long and it never happened, I just kind of learned to overlook it. But I did feel, um, once the event with JT, I felt as if um, something needed to be done about it. What do you mean by that? Well, I tried to convince um, Nate to get a petition signed with with all the people who had heard him say that. And and that would be for purposes of of the custody litigation. At that time, yes. I see. Okay. Um. Anything else about about hear any other threats or any other conversations with Nate? No, not that I can recall right off the top of my head. Okay, thanks. Those are, that, that is our proffer, Your Honor. And, and again, we would ask that Mr. Carroll, that we be allowed to have Mr. Carroll testify to those matters. I think I may not have understood Your Honor's ruling prior, but uh, considering that Mr. Watkins' statements were admissible, these seem to be um, admissible for the same reasons. Well, Defendant's state of mind. the first thing is, is that I asked that you make a proffer before you asked another witness about those threats, and that didn't happen. Uh, secondly, uh, even from this proffer, I'm not sure about the time frame of these threats. And thirdly, I'm not aware that self-defense is a uh, defense in this case, and so the relevancy of threats uh, is uh, somewhat tenuous. Uh, I, I will say that perhaps I erred in allowing the first threat in. At least it was somewhat more contemporaneous. It was within a two-year time frame. He was able to put a time frame on it. But as to these, I would say that the probative value is remote. Uh, well, I believe he argued these were continuous, and, and I could ask him more questions, but I took that to mean that he has heard this from the time that the relationship began to, to the present. Um, and also, I, uh, I mean, I think state of mind is relevant here when we're talking about potentially provocation um, or second-degree murder. Um, clearly, the, the, the first person shot here is, it was Sylvester Taylor, according to the state's evidence. Um, they clearly had had altercations in the months leading up to this, um, specifically on January 26th. I don't think we need to have something that rises to the level of actual self-defense in order for the defendant's state of mind to be impacted by his relationship with the victim. I'm reading case law that simply says where, an where a defendant seeks under 44B to use evidence of pri prior violent acts by the victim to prove the defendant's state of mind at the time he killed the victim, the defendant must show that he was aware of the prior act and, his, and that his awareness somehow related to the killing. And I can't say that that's been shown at this stage. Uh, uh, well, uh, we did our best to show that, that they had had conversations about it indicating that the defendant was aware of these threats. Right, the awareness component perhaps, but that his awareness was somehow related to the killing, I think is the second component. And that's not... Um, 
And the case goes on to say where there's no evidence the defendant shot the victim in self-defense, <coughs> evidence of the victim's prior assault was not relevant to the killing of the victim. Where the defendant did not contend he killed in self-defense, evidence that the victim had been convicted of two prior more murders would be more prejudicial than pertinent. So that's the, the relevancy concern that I have, uh, and I'm reading from State versus Lloyd, 354 NC 76, uh, which is a 2001 case. So I think the original objection was sustained on, uh, on all of those grounds, but also the, to the form of the question. Uh, I also would make the same ruling on, on the grounds of relevancy in 403, uh, the, the probative value uh, as to the events that are on trial in this case is tenuous. Please note our exception. So noted. Oh, under the 5th, 6th, 8th, and 14th Amendments. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, anything further with this witness? Yes, sir. I will, um, the next witness that we call, I will run into a block with the boy about the same, the same issue. Okay. Well, let's do it right now. All right. All right. Sir, you may step down. Sorry, I was turning around the defendant. I'm calling Nate Carroll to the stand. This is this is a different Nate Carroll than that's the okay, This was the stand of the great that was on to. Yes. Alright, this is not that. Yeah. Did I give you the statement he gave to Black Yeah, I got it. Jamal Carroll? The one who just testified was Nate Jamal Carroll. Um, this is Nathaniel <coughs> Carroll, who's actually the one who's not now. All right, sir, so have a seat. It's a, it's a yes. Beautiful. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Could you tell the court your name? Daniel Carroll. And um, what is your middle name? No, I have one. Okay. That, that explains why I never knew it. Um, Can I say something before I get started, please? What's that? I'd like to say to the Smith and the Taylor family that I'm sorry for the loss of the loved ones and to Latanya for pain and suffering through this. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to just ask about one part of uh, direct examination, and that concerns whether or not you ever heard um, Sylvester Taylor. Well, let me just find it. What is your relationship to the um, defendant? That's my son. Okay. And... You know Sylvester Taylor, one of the victims in this case? Yes, sir. And how long have you known him? Pretty much, so I say, probably 20 years or so. Okay. Um, have you ever heard him make any threats about, um, do you call your son Little Nate? Yes, sir. Okay, did you ever hear him make any threats about Little Nate? Well, he made a statement to me. Okay. When was that statement, to the best you can tell, the recollection? Back in 2013, on the 1st of June, I believe it was. Okay. Um, is there any reason that you remember that date? Because it was the payday we was at the credit union. Me and him used to do a little dealing, helping one another. He owed me a little change. And okay. on payday. Um, tell me what you, what you heard on that date. He just pretty much stated to me, came up to me and said that uh, he would kill my son, but I didn't pay no attention. I didn't feed it in that, didn't think nothing of that. And he told me the reason why, because he had, uh, Nate, Nate had, uh, at the time he was messing with someone on the job or something else. Something happened on the job and, and pretty much with somebody the job. That's pretty much all I knew. I didn't get it in that, didn't feed it in that, didn't think nothing of that. Did you, ever tell, like that. did you ever tell little Nate about that? I didn't tell him then. I told him later on because I didn't think nothing of it. I thought okay. it was all family and everybody was good, you know, so I really didn't pay it no mind. 
When did you tell little Nate about it? Probably pretty much after all this stuff really got started. You mean the um, separation? After the separation, he came live with me. Okay. Did you tell him before the, the crime occurred? Yes, I did. Okay. For voir dire purposes, that's what I have. Right. You wish cross examination? Cr cross examine on voir dire? Well, I, don't wish, I don't wish to cross examine him. All right. You wish to be heard? I do. Right. Yes, sir. I, I would object, and, and still, I mean, we're, again, we're talking about a June 1st statement of 2013, some 10, I guess I'm not good at math, uh, nine months prior to the murder. Um, and, and I still, the context of what he just testified to about this is something over a mess at work and all, I, the context of it just, I, I don't think it is relevant at all to what happened on April 9th of 2014. Um, and then Nate doesn't know, or the defendant doesn't know this until after the separation. I, I just, there's just not enough there to say that this is relevant. Mr. Brown, how is it relevant? Well, well, I think it's relevant. The fact is, the fact that it's relevant to the fact that the defendant has heard that a person um, that he sees that day, who eventually becomes the victim, has made threats against him, it's going to have a possibility affecting how he's going to act and how he's going to affect what it affects both the issues of premeditation or deliberation about that. And so I think the fact that that, you know, the fact that he sees this person, that there is a relationship we've heard throughout the testimony, that there is a hostility in their relationship, and the fact that this is further evidence that he has heard of this is going to affect his conduct on that day. It doesn't, I don't think we, we would argue that it doesn't have to amount to the issue of self-defense. I think the difference in the case that you cited was it, that was a case where the victim, I think, had two murder convictions, if I'm remembering correctly. But this is threats, not in general, but towards this very man. And so I think that that is relevant if he knows about the threats, and he clearly says that he knew about the threats. And whether Mr. Carroll himself took him seriously, it's a question about what could be about somebody being told about the threats later on. So I think that is relevant. That, that is our argument. It's argument that it should be admitted under the North Carolina Rules of Evidence from 401, 402, and 403 plus the U.S. Constitution, 56, Do, do you have any case law that supports the notion that in a case where self-defense is not being asserted, that it is probative on the issue of premeditation, intent, malice, I mean, do you have any? I'm sorry. Yes. Um, if I can just have one second. Mr. Waller. And I. To go directly to that point, Your Honor, there is absolutely no evidence in this case that Sylvester Taylor had a gun on April 9th of 2014. We've spent a lot of time talking about January 26th and January 2nd, but on April 9th of 2014, there is zero evidence in this case that Sylvester Taylor had a gun. There is evidence, and there's been plenty of it, that he had guns, and that, and the evidence, which was originally introduced by the state, um, that he had been told that his son, that he had pulled a gun on his son, all that goes to state of mind. Now, in their evidence originally, um, JT backed away from whether he's had a gun, but what's never in dispute is what he told his um
about him having guns, and I think all of that makes it relevant when you put it all together. It has some relevance.
the specific uh, threat that is alleged here, one that relates to uh, events that occurred in June of 2013 and, and alleged marital infidelity. Um, I find that there's a lack of relevancy between those threats and the uh, uh, events that were occurring from January 2014 to the time of the alleged crimes. Um, furthermore, I find that the argument that somehow an awareness of a threat uh, is relevant to uh, deliberation is not supported by the law. There are times when threats are relevant, but every case that I've found relating to that, there's a component of self-defense or duress or necessity or some defense that where the awareness of those threats uh, becomes relevant. Here, uh, there is no evidence of self-defense, um, and so I don't find that the awareness of these threats is probative to the issues of this case. Um, the, uh, I think it does go back to the case that I cited previously uh, in our prior discussion, and that I think that that uh, test applies in this case as well, that it's just simply not relevant. Even if it were relevant, I think my concern about the fact that the threats were related to some, uh, some different set of circumstances uh, makes under Rule 403 the probative value outweighed by the undue prejudice uh, in balancing the evidence. It tends to confuse the juries as to the issues that they must consider uh, when they're instructed on the law relating to the events uh, in this particular crime. And so for those reasons, I'll sustain the objection as to further testimony from this witness about the threat that he uh, described a few minutes ago. Your Honor, just for record purposes, we, we would have been asking for it to be admitted pursuant to rules 401, 402, and 403, and 404, North Carolina Rules of Evidence. Um, and under 803 um, hearsay exceptions rules and also and also under 801 is it being in 802 for it being non-hearsay purposes and under the fifth sixth eighth and 14th amendments of the united states constitution yes thank you all right uh let's um uh, let's go back to the jury unless there's anything else i'm going to ask you to step down so that you can be called and sworn in front of the jury sir Okay. Some of the similar hearsay type, there may be some other types of issues that come up, but I, but you, I don't feel this need that we need to do a proffer about those beforehand. And no, not, beforehand. not as to just hearsay objections. Okay. I don't think we can take those up and then you can make a proffer after, afterwards if you feel that I've improperly sustaining the objection to okay. welcome to make a proper evidence you have to go. Okay, all right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Let's go ahead then and uh, bring jurors back in.
All right, thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe we're ready to ask whether there's further evidence for the defense. Um, yes, Your Honor, we would call Nathaniel Carroll. Good morning, um, Mr. Carroll. Could you please um, tell the jury your name? It's Nathaniel Carroll. And where do you live? Roseville, North Carolina. And um, what is your relationship to Nate? It's my son. Um, how many children do you have? Three. And how does he fall in the relationship with them? You see that the youngest, the oldest? Oldest. Um, and um, how old are you? At the one. Um, when um, do you remember when Nate started going out with Latanya? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you remember when um, she was pregnant with Jeremy? Yes, sir. Has Nate always been involved in Jeremy's life? Yes, sir. Okay. Did it come at the very beginning? Maybe a little bit more? Well, the start where he came to me was I'm sure that Jeremy was his child or not. So he asked me what to do, and I told him I'd get the blood test. Okay. But once the blood test showed it was his child, he how was active there. was he in his life? He was there ever since after that. Okay. And do you remember about how old they were when Jeremy and Latanya got together? 14, 15, something like that. 15, 16, somewhere around in there. And were they together the entire time? Um, from about that point until they separated in 2013? Yes, sir. If I may um, approach. Yes. I'm showing you what's been locked in this defendant's exhibit, um, number five. Um, do you recognize this Yes, sir. This picture? Yes, sir. What is it? It's Latanya and Nathan. That's as pretty as they can be. Do you remember when it was taken? Yes, sir. When was that? Well, I don't remember the exact date, but it's prom time, so. It's prom time? Does um, it fairly and accurately represent, um, fairly and accurately portray what they looked like at that time? Yes, sir. It's them. Would it help you illustrate your testimony? Well, what now? Help you illustrate your testimony? Yes, sir. Um, I would admit, need to admit that it's exhibit number five. Any objection? No, sir. It's allowed. Um, move to publish it to the jury. Yes, sir. How do you wish to do that? Mr. Carroll, could you just come over and stand up there and walk by the jury? And don't speak unless you ask a question, sir. How many children does um, Nate have? Three. Three. Um, 
We've talked about JT. Who are the other two children? Nautica and Amber. And was your son active in their lives before the separation? Yes, sir, he was, and after it too. What? And after the separation. Yes, okay. he was, and after the separation. Um, was his family, um, Natanya and the kids, very important to him? Objection. It's sustained. If I may approach, Yes. I'm showing you what's been marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number Six. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, sir. What's that a picture of? The family of Nathan and Latanya. This is pretty as hell. Do you know about when that photograph was taken? No, sir. You think it may have been taken within a couple of years of the separation. Well, pretty much somewhere around there because they look, the girls look pretty big there. So probably somewhere like that. Does it, um, does it fairly and accurately depict how the family looked? Yes, sir. It would help you illustrate your testimony. Yes, sir. I would move for the admission and it's exhibit number six. Any objection? No, sir. It's allowed. Okay. I'm going to ask you um, to, um, oh, may I publish it to the judge? Yes, sir, ma'am. Mr. Kale, if you could stand up, and I am going to ask you, um, if you, before sh just showing it to the jurors, if you could point out who each of the people are in the pictures. Before showing it to them? Just well, show it to the jurors. Okay. And before okay. walking from them. This is JT. This is Latanya. This is Nathan. This is Amber. And this is Nautical. And then you could just go by them. Um, do you um, do you remember in 2013 if something happened between the marriage and, of Latanya and Nate? Do I remember? Yeah. What yes, happened? Sir. What happened? All I know, I got a phone call that they were separating on December the 20th, or Friday night, the Saturday of December the 21st. My son Nathan. Called me and asked me that I know that Tanya had left her in the keys. And I told him I'd be right over. Did he sound upset? Well, at the time, no. When I got there, I asked him, was he all right? He said he was okay. Sustained as to what was said. During, after the separation, during Christmas, did the families, did the two, did, did you see LaTanya at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. With the, with the couple, um, tell us about that. On Christmas Day, Nathan and LaTanya and the kids came by the house. So they were separated, but they were still spending some time together. Separated at that time, yes, sir. Okay. After 
January, and we heard some things previously in court about events in early January. Um, did you see your son um, often in the months that followed? Yes, sir. He was staying with me. And obviously, you've known your son your whole his whole life. Every day I've been there, yes, sir. How did he seem? How did he seem? Relevant. Uh, Overruled. How did he seem? Did seem he like seem a, sad? Until after the separation? Yes. Oh, yes, he was. Yes. Very sad. I saw him watch him cry for probably two months every day. And you've seen people who've gone through breakups beforehand? Objection irrelevant. Sustained. Would be arguing it for context. Sustained. Did he say things about wanting his family back? Every day. Was he working on remodeling his home? Yes, sir, he was. Can you tell us about that? Well, he was staying with me in and out remodeling the home, and uh, I even asked him why was he spending all that money. In it? I didn't really know the tensions at the time, but then I gathered that he was trying to get his family back together. He was doing it for that reason. Um. Let's, I want to talk with you a few moments about January 26 and about a time when there was an exchange between the um, getting the kids to back to LaTanya. Do you remember what that I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and who was picking up the kids from LaTanya? side of the family. Mr. Taylor. Could you tell us what you remember happening? Me, Nathan, and my son, Nathaniel, went to the McDonald's to exchange his kids. So as we pulled up, some vessel was there on the white Nissan. He got out, left the door open. I got out and spoke to him, shook his hand. We standing and talking. And Jamal got out. Well, I said Jamal, but it's Nathaniel, my other son. He got out and you're talking about the, the, the young man who just side. testified. Yeah. He got out of spoke. So as the Nate was going on by, I started putting the kids' clothes in the car. So Vessel reached out to shake little Nate's hand. Little Nate said he haven't been shaking his hand. He's not going to shake his hand now. And if you got anything to say to me, about me, say to me and not my kids. And little Nate continued to go putting the children's clothes in the car. Sylvester broke to the door of his car. I went behind Sylvester, and he looked back up at me. He stood back up, and me and him went on back to talking, and Nate finished putting the clothes in the car. He pulled out from the McDonald's and went down through, went there like a bat out of hell on that Nissan. And the next thing I know, we got a phone call. Jeremy had called, and they was headed to Lake Glad. I told my two sons it was the wrong thing to do. Because the screen of order was in place. I was not going with them. I took them to their vehicle. I got out. I went to my mother's house. Later on, they called and said they went to the sheets on Highway 64. Um, did, um, did you hear what JT um, said had happened? No, sir. I was not there. I was there when the phone call was made, but I did not hear the phone call. Okay. I didn't hear what was said. Um, did you see anything in Sylvester's car, in Mr. Taylor's car? It's a black bag under the driver's seat there. 
But I did not see a gun, but I seen the black bag that he stated it was a gun. Objection. But I never seen it. We saw a black bag. Yeah, I seen the black bag. Okay. Let me, um, was asked you some questions about um, Jeremy's birthday party. Yes, sir. Um, do you remember when the um, birthday party was supposed to be? All I know is on his birthday, which was April the 5th, and they was talking about it that morning, but it was going to be at Nathan's at the home house, and they was waiting on Latanya, and I think she was undecided what she was going to do. She was supposed to be bringing the birthday cake, and they didn't ever get together, so we ended up doing it at my mother's house at about 5 o'clock that evening, and I bought the birthday cake. So. Um, so the birthday party did happen. Yeah, it did happen. But Latanya did not come? No, sir. Um, let me, before I forget one question, is, um, is Nate left-handed or right-handed? He's right-handed. The day of the crimes, April 9th, or maybe the evening of April 10th, did you get a phone call from your son? After the fact? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, just. You seen him before that day? Yes, sir. What do you remember about seeing him before that day? Him and JT come to the house after school, and I put spot plugs and wires on his truck. We worked on the truck, we talked, and he was supposed to be giving me the money for the parts I bought. Later on, we left out. And when I left out, I called him, he didn't answer. Okay. So. so that night after what you now know is the crime happened, did you right. receive a phone call of, from your son? I received a phone call, he stated. Objection. been previously admitted. I, I believe if the phone call, yes, Douglas Carroll's, Carroll's testimony. Right, so. I'm sorry. Uh, with, with Douglas Carroll's testimony. Right, as to what he heard. Uh, so I'm gonna allow it for corroboration purposes for okay. impeachment. Okay. In case All right, so members of the jury, it's allowed solely for the purposes of corroborating a witness who's already testified in this case. And you're cons to consider it solely for that purpose and not for the truth of the matter asserted. Go ahead, sir. And, and what, and did you recognize the voice on the, on the phone? Yes, sir. Whose was it? Nathan. And what did he, what did he say? Take care of my kids, day I'm out of here. And hung up. How did he sound? Just like I just said, take care of my kids, day I'm out of here. And hung up. Were you worried? Yes, I was. At that point, had you known about the offenses that had happened, about the, about the, the, the deaths of the Taylors? I had got a phone call stating that something had happened for us, Latanya and Nate fighting and somebody gun. That's all I knew. Did you get the phone call from? I think Jamal, my son Nathaniel called me. And then I returned the call to Jeremy. And asked him was everything okay. He stated, no, everything is not okay. And I just hung the phone up. I didn't, I was upset then myself. Really didn't know what was going on. I was upset from the phone call that the fighting in the gun. So. Day, did you going back to the day earlier? Did you see um, Nate drinking or smoking? Yeah, during the time I worked on the truck, him and one of his buddies left, and he came back. They was drinking, smoking. And when you say smoking, what was being smoked? Uh, more like a marijuana. I don't know what they roll up in those little 
black papers, they say, you know, they say one thing, it might be something else. So I really don't know, but marijuana, I would say. Okay. No objection to speculation. Overruled. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Cross examination. Mr. Carroll, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How you doing? Okay. Mr. Carroll, um, let's let's go straight to April um, 9th of 2010. Do you recall what time it was when when your son and JT left um, left your residence there after working on the truck? Uh, probably, probably I say seven o'clock that evening. Seven o'clock p.m. Yeah. Did, are you aware of any time they went over to a cousin Jason's house? No, I was not. Okay. All right. And you said that uh, you thought that the defendant was smoking and drinking, but did you notice anything unusual about his behavior at that time, sir? You no, know, sir. That day pretty much we talked, and he kind of like he might have had a lot on the mind, but he didn't say nothing. We pretty much talked about some things, but nothing <coughs> that I thought was really wrong or nothing. And do you recall talking to Investigator Blackwell that night on – the night of April 9th, 2014, at just five minutes before midnight. Yes, sir. Okay, and at that time, did you tell Investigator Blackwell that um, your son seemed himself today um, when he and uh, when he and your grandson JT were at your house? Yes, sir. Okay, so back on April 9th, 2014, you said he seemed fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Now. Um, Mr. Carroll, you were asked by Investigator Blackwell if you knew whether or not your, your son had a gun. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. I you, think. I don't quite remember that. Okay. He, I, he might have, but I don't remember that. Okay. Um, did you know if your son had a, gu had a gun back on April 9th of 2014? I heard he had got a gun after he was robbed. Okay. After he was robbed? He was, well, back in when his house got broken into, he got robbed. I heard that he had a gun after that. Okay. Let me... If I may approach the witness. Yes. What number are we on, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. That conversation. Yes, and sir. Where did that conversation take place? At Holden Acres. In, in a patrol vehicle? It was outside, I believe, in the code. And Holden Acres is your residence, is that right? It's Nathan. It was Nathan's resident. That was a home house he remodeled. Okay. And in this quote, if you'll read right here with me, Mr. Carroll. I ain't put my glasses on because I, I can't see all the stuff you're showing me right now, okay? That's right. Mr. Nathan Carroll was asked if his son had a firearm. And he said he did not. However, he was told tonight he had one. Is that you recall that? Who said he had a gun? I said he had a gun, or did take the Blackwell said it? Who said it was the one? Mr. Nathan Carroll, Nathaniel Carroll, okay. excuse me, was, was asked if his son had a firearm, and he stated he did not. However, he was told tonight that he had one. You recall making that statement? No, sir, I don't. No. Mr. Carroll, um, let me ask you a little bit more about that night. After your son left uh, with JT after working on the truck, you didn't see him again that night at all, did you? No, no, sir. And the only information you got about how he seemed that night was relayed to you by Douglas, Car Douglas Carroll. Yes, sir. Okay. The, um, you, mentioned, you mentioned the house and, and working on the house. Um, do you think he said he was working on remodeling that house after the separation? Yes, sir. Okay. And what you know? How would you describe him as uh, busy at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, however, Mr. Carroll, do you recall speaking with Miss Lorna Haddix from Child Protective Services after after the murders? Yes, sir. Down in Zebra, North Carolina. Well, I, I'm not sure where I'm, she. That's the only time I talked to her once. Okay. I hope. I'm just letting you know if it was her. That's I don't right. remember. 
Well, and I'll just let me give you just a little bit of context. After, after the murders, social workers came and talked to you about where, where they wanted the children to go. Right. Okay. Um, and you gave them some information about, about the children and kind of what y'all wanted to see happen and that you wanted to still be in their life. Right. Okay. Um, but during that time, Ms. Haddix, do you recall she um, asked you a little bit about how the defendant had been acting and what he'd been up to during the, during the time in question? during the separation period? We did not talk about Nathan that I know of. Okay. Well, and is it your testimony here today that, that your son had been busy remodeling that house? Right. And I believe your, your son, Jamal Carroll, also testified that he was busy on the, the defendant had been remodeling the house during that time period and was busy all the time. Yes, sir. Okay. But you remember speaking with Ms. Haddix? Yes, sir. May I approach the witness again, Your Honor? Yes. Mr. Carroll, I'm going to hand you what has now been marked for identification purposes as State's Exhibit Number 265. Uh, starting here, it identifies the date as April 15th of 2014. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's um, uh, five, or, five or six days after the murder at this point. Yes, sir. And Social Worker Franklin, Social Worker Clements, Social Worker um, Alice Williamson met with paternal relatives Nathaniel Car Carroll, that's yourself. Yes, sir. And paternal uncle Jamal Carroll. Yes, sir. Your son that testified previously, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And specifically in regards to, you know, your, your son's behavior, I'm going to read this paragraph right here and correct me if I'm wrong in any way. It says, SWS, social workers, asked if he has noticed anything concerning concerning regarding Nathan's behavior. Social worker was told that Nathan had been sleeping more and was not keeping himself as busy as he should. Um, he was not working as much as normal. Do you recall telling the social worker that? No, sir. Mr. Carroll, um, after the murders happened, well, let me let me ask you this way, Mr. Carroll. Um, you've been in constant contact with your son since uh, since he was arrested. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. From I guess he was a rape, uh, arrested on April tenth of two thousand fourteen, and you made contact with him up until today. Yes, sir. Okay. And dear, I want to turn your attention back to December of two thousand and fourteen, uh, Mr. Carroll. At that point, did you help facilitate? a phone call between the defendant and his son, JT. Yes, sir. Okay. And in that phone call, the defendant called you from jail, right? Yes, sir. And at that point, you were at JT school. Yes, sir. And you handed the phone to JT, and the, the defendant and JT had a conversation for over 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. And at that point, um, the defendant was in custody. Is that right? Yes, sir. And at that point, JT um, was going through some um, treatment for what he had witnessed. Is that right? So far, I know. Okay. And as a result of you facilitating the conversation between the defendant and JT, um, there were some court orders that took place that affected your son's ability uh, to... Objection. <clears throat> Sustained to the extent that they are not directly pertaining to this witness. After that conversation, Mr. Carroll, you, it was ordered that you um, not facilitate any more conversations between the defendant and JT, is that right? Yes, sir. May we have just a moment, John? Yes.
recross. I'm sorry, redirect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and take a 15 minute recess until five minutes until 12. Please recall all the rules and instructions I've given you, members of the jury, and leave your notepads in your chairs. Gather in the deliberation room at five minutes till 12. Everybody